okay in today's lecture we'll uh, study about assessment of adequacy of attention member in yielding and in fracture so we are given um, a two angle based a double angle based or two angle based attention member uh, the angle given is 4 into 4 into half inches means one leg is 4 inches the other leg is also 4 inches uh, also it is connected to a gusset plate okay dead load is 40 kips it is given live load is 120 kips uh, we have to check its uh, adequacy in tension in yielding as well as in fracture uh, the material strength that is a36 steel it means fy would be 36 ksi and fu would be 58 ksi the dia of bolt is 3 by 4 inches so you can calculate the dia of hole and subsequently net areas and effective areas Okay, we can imagine the uh, isometric or 3D view of this tension member. I mean, two angles, one and two are connected to this uh, gusset plate. Okay, the connection length is 21 inches, means the distance between first and last bolt is 21 inches. So it's very easy. The connection length is, I mean, the distance between first and the last bolt. Another concept is this centroid. A centroid concept is very easy to uh, understand I mean for example we have a figure and the figure is a rectangle for example so I may draw a rectangle here so this figure has two centroids because it's a plane figure okay one minute okay this is x-axis and this is y-axis so the centroid or geometric center along x-axis would be referred as x dash and this is the centroid and along y-axis it would be y dash okay for example this is 10 inches and this is also 10 inches so as it is a rectangle and there is symmetry along x-axis and y-axis so x would be simply 10 by 2 or 5 inches and uh, similarly y dash would be 5 inches too okay let's move on to this channel this channel is c1030 do you know what c1030 signifies 30 is the weight or weight of this member structural member or structural shape in pound per feet and 10 is the depth this depth is 10 inches so if you have to calculate its centroid along x and y axis uh, it would be simply here it would be y dash and here it would be x dash the centroid so you need not calculate it because in the manual you can find both the values okay this i know is 10 inches this is so easy to find so it would be because it is symmetric about this x-axis half of the area lies above this axis and half of the area lies below this axis it means the centroid along y-axis would be 5 inches but along x-axis you have to find it it is about 0.639 but from the manual you can easily calculate it okay similarly I mean um, for angles this concept is also very easy the same concept would apply for example this is an angle okay, it goes on like this and this and this okay. okay same okay uh, the centroid along uh, x axis x dash and this, this would be y dash so you can calculate it from manual in the manual you can find a line or column uh, underlining or under this these two headings x dash and y dash so it's very easy to find okay going back to our question so this is the isometric view and i you know this is a centroid along x axis and the centroid along y axis can also be found from the manual so you need not calculate it okay next okay first we have to calculate the load I mean the load on the structure 
as we are using LRFT, so we'll use some factors 1.2 dead load and 1.6 live load. Actually, you have to maximize the load. Uh, the LRFD use, uh, uses these factors. Uh, in ASD, you just simply have to add them dead load plus live load without any factors. Okay, I have uh, multiplied 1.2 dead load with uh, 1.6 live load, so I get 240 pips. Okay, uh, the area of uh, single angle because there are two, two angles have been used the area of a single angle is 3.75 square inches now this was found from the uh, manual so i have to go to manual so i mean you, i have to show you that i have taken it from the manual okay four into four into half inches this four into four into half inches the third column is area and seventh column is centroid along y-axis okay and if i go downwards i can also find a column under x dash this is a centroid along x uh, x axis okay for my angle four into four into half uh, the third column says the value in the third column says 3.75 now this is the area this is the area of angle and in the seventh column, I see 1.18. This is the centroid along y-axis. As it is symmetric angle, 4 into 4, it means y dash would be equal to x dash. So I can see here, y x dash value is also, also, also 4 into 4 into half is 1.18. Same as, same as, same as y dash. 4 into 4 into half, this 1.18. So you can easily calculate the area as well as centroid along both the axes. Okay, going back to our numerical. Uh, okay, so I have calculated the area. So area have been calculated. Area has been calculated using um, the manual. I have to multiply this because it is a double angle, and the area given in that uh, manual is for single angle. So we, I have to multiply it with 2, so I get 2, 7.5 square inches. Now okay, I can easily calculate the net area. The net area would be calculated as very simple, I mean it's a very simple thing. Too. You have this depth 4 inches. Uh, the area is given, so this is 4 inches, okay, no doubt. But you can easily calculate using AG minus NDT. This is NDT. So in any failure path, a single hole appears that's why n value of n is 1 dia of bolt is 3 by 4 1 by 8 is allowance and the thickness of the angle is half inches so you get this net area then you have to find the shear lag factor and you have to use this formula now in the next slide I'll explain what what shear lag factor is but this is the connection line 21 inches given to you x dash is the centroid along x axis i have found from the manual 1.1 inches this shear lag factor is u is equal to 0.944 so you have to use here you know you have to calculate effective area this effective area would be used in calculating fracture strength effective area is u a net and you have the net area you have just found out the net area and you have also found out u from this value okay you will calculate the effective area and you will use it in the fracture formula but first we have to explain what u is okay okay u is actually a shear lag factor and it is used to account for uneven or non-uniform distribution uh, stress distribution in a con in a connection okay for example you can see uh, this in figure one half of the angle is connected to a gusset plate and half of the angle is unconnected or non-connected. It is, it is unconnected. It means the stress distribution is not uniform. You can see the stress profile here. It means this area, which is unconnected, would be more stressed compared to connected. So, in this case, if you see the formula, two cases may arise. Two cases may arise. For example, the first case is if you increase the connection length, like here, you had you have increased okay i i can use the other color so that it can be easily understood okay 
the connection length is very large or long that is 21 inches here it means what if I connect the whole this whole angle with a gusset plate it means L would be too large or too long it means the stress distribution would become uniform and even if L becomes greater then this value will become 0 and u will become 1 u means u means 1 u is equal to 1 means the stress distribution is even and uniform okay the second case may arise that x is very small you know what x is x is the centroid of this projecting or protruding part protruding leg whatever so you may see here that this is a pro protruding or projecting part of this angle of this connection now if x becomes 0 i mean you remove this part then stress distribution will again become uniform and even it means u will become 1 so uh, actually in a tension member some part of a uh, member may be connected and some part of a member may not be connected it means all the parts are not under uniform or even distribution i mean you can see in figure 1 I have just explained it so u is very very important factor and it has to be accounted it has to be used in the design of or in checking the adequacy of a tension member finally finally you calculate the effective area and you have found out u I mean in the previous slides and that area you have also found okay effective area is 3.126 square inches you have to multiply it with 2 because it's a double angle or two angle tension member and we get 6.25 square inches finally yielding this formula is very famous formula and you have been using uh, for the last many lectures pn is equal to fyag uh, the gross area always yields and effective area always fractures or ruptures okay fy is 36 for a 36 teeth we get 270 kips and resistance factor would be given in the exam it is for yielding you can remember as well it is 0.9 so 243 kips is two greater than 240 kips that is the load on the structure it means your tension member can a, can be able to resist this 240 kips similarly for fracture strength you will use this formula fuae and you have to multiply it 0.75 it should be given in the exam or you can remember it and finally you have multiplied it with 362.5 and you get 272 kips again it is greater than 240 kips 240 kips is the weight or the load on the structure and whereas your structure yields or fractures at this much load ye baat aapko samajh aani chahiye ki aapka jo structure hai wo 272 kip pe fracture hoga aur aapka jo jo structure hai ye jo aapko tension member diya gaya hai wo 243 kip pe yield karega जबकि आपके पास स्ट्रक्चर के वो या टेंशन मेंबर पे लोड कितना है 240 के पे और 272 240 के पे दोनों केसेस में तो कहने का मकसद ये है कि ये एडिक्वेट है जो इंपॉर्टेंट कांसेप्ट मुझे लग रहा है वो शियर लैग फैक्टर का है तो शियर लैग का फैक्टर जो है वो आपने ये थोड़ा सा ठीक तरीके से समझना है और आई मीन अगेन मैं आपको बता रहा हूं कि इट इज यूज्ड टू अकाउंट फॉर अनइवन स्ट्रेस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन आप देख सकते हैं कि इसका हाफ पार्ट अनकनेक्टेड है और हाफ पार्ट कनेक्टेड है इसका मतलब जब मैं स्ट्रेस प्रोफाइल बनाता हूं तो अनकनेक्टेड पार्ट ज्यादा स्ट्रेस में है कंपेयर टू अनकनेक्टेड पार्ट इसका क्या मतलब है इसका मतलब यह कि दो काम किए जा सकते हैं एक काम यह किया जा सकता है कि हम अब स्ट्रेस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन को यूनिफॉर्म बनाना है तो क्या काम किया जा सकता है आप बता सकते हैं मैं यह काम कर सकता हूं कि मैं तमाम के तमाम पार्ट को एंगल को कनेक्ट कर जब तमाम का तमाम एंगल कनेक्ट हो जाएगा इसका मतलब है कैसे होगा इस ये एल ज्यादा हो जाएगा एल ज्यादा जब हो जाएगा कनेक्शन लेंथ ज्यादा हो जाएगी तो यू की वैल्यू 1 बन जाएगी क्योंकि एल इस डिनोमिनेटर में एल की वैल्यू ज्यादा डालें ना ये टर्म 0 बन जाएगी और यू की वैल्यू 1 हो जाएगी अच्छा दूसरा काम मैं ये कर सकता हूं कि मैं एक्स की वैल्यू को कम इस प्रोट्रूडिंग पार्ट का सेंट्रोइड कम कर दूं वो कैसे करूं मैंने इसको ही रिमूव करना है इस पार्ट तो जब x खत्म हो जाएगा तो अगेन x 0 बन गया तो ये टर्म भी 0 बन गई और u की वैल्यू 1 इसका मतलब है कि स्ट्रेस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन 1 तो ये हो नहीं सकता एक्चुअली ये पॉसिबल नहीं है तो हमें u कैलकुलेट करना होगा 
सो so, कोई क्वेश्चन हो आप कमेंट सेक्शन में इंशाल्लाह पूछें कोई मसला हो इंशाल्लाह आसानी होगी और हम देखेंगे कि क्या होता है